Darren Jones. Winnipeg, how are you? Winnipeg. Winnipeg, I feel the love. How are you, Balcony? How are you on the floor? Wow. What a welcoming. Thank you all very much. Hello and welcome to the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. My name is Darren Jones and I am thrilled to be your host tonight. Now tonight's big show is all about first world problems. But I'm a little bit offended that CBC wanted me to host the first world problem show. Because what does that say about me really? Hey Darren, we're doing a show focusing on privilege and entitlement. You would be the perfect host. <laughs> so what are we talking about exactly? What exactly is a first world problem? Well, let's go through a few examples. If you've ever heard yourself say, what do you mean you're out of kale? That's a first world problem. If your Ashtanga yoga class is full, so you're forced to take the Bikram yoga class, which in your opinion isn't as good because you don't like to sweat when you work out, that is a first world problem. Justin Bieber. That is a first world problem. <laughs> that is, that is. So let's talk about tonight's show. We have a world-class lineup of incredible comedians who are going to entertain and delight you tonight. I cannot stress how terrific this lineup is. And being a comedian really is a first world job, isn't it? You're not gonna go to another continent in here. Okay, you two walk 10 miles to the river to get some clean water. Uh, you two keep making mud bricks so we can get a roof over our heads. And you two write a funny five minutes about how they're doing it wrong. <laughs> On Maslow's hierarchy of needs, comedian is pretty far down. You know, you've got food, water, shelter, clothing, warmth, uh, internet, power steering. A good cell phone plan, that's important. Warm socks, reruns of Honey Boo Boo. The important stuff, you know? I think comedian is somewhere between AAA batteries and those hard candies your grandma keeps in her purse. When the apocalypse comes, comedians will be the human kindling. My point is, you are gonna love these comedians both tonight and in the bleak future, when you eat them and wear their skins. <laughs> I wanna tell you a story that can only happen in the first world. Definitely a first world problem. Uh, years ago, I had a TV show called Buzz. Thank you. <laughs> One guy saw it, that's why it's not on anymore. <laughs> it was an interview show, and I was interviewing Mr. T. You know Mr. T? Mohawk chains, I pitted a fool. Nice fella. Anyway, I'm interviewing on the street, on a street corner, and we were playing a game called, Who Do You Pity? I would list a celebrity, and Mr. T would tell me if he pitied the fool. And Mr. T is pitying everybody. Oprah, I pitied a fool. The president, I pitied a fool. Then I asked him if he pitied the Backstreet Boys. Mr. T is on a long pity rant about the Backstreet Boys. I pity them, pity that, pity, 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 Backstreet, Backstreet. While he's pitying the Backstreet Boys, I notice a bee was flying around his head. Mr. T takes a big breath in to continue his pitying, right? The bee flies into his mouth, into his throat. All of a sudden, Mr. T is choking on a bee. What do I do? The toughest man on the planet is losing to a bee. But not for long, this is a true story. Mr. T spits out the B, steps on it. Without missing a beat, he says, T1, B0, I pity that B. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. That is a first world problem. You're a terrific crowd, we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. 